Panic. It crept up my spine like first rising vibes of an acid frenzy. All these horrible realities began to dawn on me. Here I was, alone in Las Vegas, completely twisted on drugs. No cash, no story for the magazine. I didn't even know who'd won the race. How would Horatio Alger have handled this situation? All the ragman draw circles Up and down the block I'd ask him what the matter was But I know that he don't talk I want to talk first of all about what music you listen to whilst um, creating. I can see the records are here. I've noticed yeah. the Beatles are Hard Day's Night at the top. Yeah, but there's a hell of a lot of others actually. And Paul Simon he used to like a lot. Yeah, solo as opposed to Simon and him and Art. Well, him and Art, Garfunkel, yeah. I like them. And uh, I used to like, I've still got it actually. It's a record called, uh, it's the Trumpet Voluntary. And I used to be playing, there was, it was played, there was the, the, the something collective it was a german and they used to and it would always go wrong you know and so then you could almost kind of create the dance around the song and easily yes something like that and you're feeling um energetic and I'm not sure if I do. I'm trying to think where that came now from now. It's like it's pulled by a horse. This thing here? Yeah. This, I can't believe, isn't original. What? The stone. You fooled me. Well, didn't I, didn't I think I did that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's an old piece of a ship. You see that piece? Is the, you know, the, I, th- this yeah. thing here, right there. Yeah, the what they call it, the... Um, like the spine of it, the, the, the well, what do they call it? These I don't know, my the, nautical knowledge isn't up to scratch, you know. Well, the, the bow, the, the, bow. The, the, you know, the piece it, the, you can see the shape of a boat coming in it, yeah, and that's where it's come from. So, I made this. It's a beautiful space, yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? it is. I like the clock, so is the space itself a kind of an ongoing work of art as well for you yeah i suppose it's something like that yes it's uh it was always i probably it was because i think um i'm quite fond of uh graffiti and things you know so it's i like i liked it in drawing you know that 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 way i mean it's long before banksy and all that i was going to ask you uh an admirer of Banksy's work. Well, it's 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 a shame he's done some of them because some places he spoiled some places putting it there, you know. But I thought it was quite funny that he made it into something that you couldn't have you couldn't uh, avoid. It was it was obviously out of place, you know. I think for him as well, perhaps for you too, it's the idea that art should say something. And it yeah. should be making a statement. Uh, it should and be noticed and, and forcing people, people to think and to look and see and and um, uh, there's, a, there's a there's a there's an interesting um, Wittgenstein who said the only thing of value is a thing you cannot say, but if you can see it, wow, it makes a difference. You know, you go, you know, when you're trying to explain something, you try and draw it, and you say, oh, I see what you mean now. I guess that's the the beauty of great art, and the, <laughs> excuse me, it's okay. <laughs> yes, you sir. I like that. <laughs> it sounds good on the mics. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, music can do that too, can't it? It can put into words something which the listener can't themselves describe, but then as soon as they hear the song, they go, "Yes, that's exactly yeah. how I feel." Yeah, that's right. I'll play you one of my songs in a minute on the. I'd love to hear some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the in the on my computer. Yeah. Uh, who were the, the artists for you that were of early influence? Well, obviously the Beatles were interesting. And uh, I think um, uh, Django Reinhardt. I learned guitar with the man who used to play with him. Wow. 
The Django was the one Django you had right. three had fingers. Two fingers. Two. Well, it was uh, uh, these. Th- these didn't work, but those did. And it was an interesting kind of thing. But, but he had a uh, um, a fire in his caravan, you know, gypsy caravan, and it damaged those. So he had to learn to replay with two fingers. Amazing, actually. yeah, and it became extraordinary. Yeah. Well, there's the story that the guitarist from Black Sabbath, Tony Iommi, had a an yeah. accident in the factory he was working in, and he lost oh. the tips of two of his fingers, wow. and he gave up music, and he said, "Well, I can't play right. anymore." And his boss from the factory came round with a Django Reinhardt CD, and that's said, really "If this guy can yeah. do it, you can yeah. do. It. You've got an extra one." Yeah, and that's yeah. what inspired the, the whole Black Sabbath sound, is oh, because right. he had to the have these good extensions. Name too, Black Sabbath, oh, it's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? I'll say, yeah. Who uh, who would be the people that inspired you to draw and and to paint? And um, Andre Francois, French French cartoonist, um, Django, um, uh, Duchamp, um, Picasso. Uh, uh, oh, George Gross. That? Hmm. George Gross. George Gross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. George Gross. And quite a few others, really. But I just knew about them all and looked at them a lot. And I suppose somewhat influencing, influencing, influencing me. And I don't think you can avoid being influenced by things you get taken interest in. I mean, books I've done, I've I've done pastiches of different artists, you know. When I was doing a lot of etching in uh, Aberdeen, you know, Peacock Printmakers, I used to go up there once a month and create something and, uh, you know, I'd have an edition out of it. That's how I used to like my printing, going up there every month and doing the... I get it. And there was a uh, Arthur. What was his name? Arthur. Arthur. Pra, Arthur. No, I can't remember his second name now. But there was another one. Tony Th- Thwaite. He he was um, Anthony Thwaite. He he was he's still there till recently, and he's just just re- retired from it now. I don't know what he's doing. He's moved somewhere. He moved up to Edinburgh for some reason. Uh, but I suppose if you're near, yeah, yeah, it's not far from Edinburgh, is it? No. So, so I don't think he was thinking of going on a world tour. tour you know? <laughs> Let me ask you this, Ralph. I was fascinated by cartoons at school. And yeah. in art class, I would often draw cartoons for assignments. And there's one project I did where I tried to reimagine the work of Picasso in a cartoon style. And yeah. my teacher would say, cartoons aren't art. And she would, oh, and she would mark me down, and and so it really discouraged me from continuing it's down bullshit. that path. Uh, and I wanted somebody to... say to me, they've actually said that to me. So, but yeah, but you're not really an artist; you're only a cartoonist. So I thought, well, it's an artist, though. You have to use the line or something, you know, color something, to create a picture, fill a space in some way. And I guess you're being an artist. What else would you be? You know, a graffiti. Well, you could be a... Uh, well, it's like calling a sculptor a builder, isn't it? Yeah, so you're, you're not, yes, you're not you're an artist, right. you're a builder. You're a builder. And it's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you're creating something out of nothing and saying something yeah. with that creation, then that's the definition of art, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I suppose it is, really. But yeah, so she discouraged me and... Oh, very good. So, <laughs> Took so me off. Yeah, sad, wasn't it? Did you ever have people trying to discourage you? Well, I was discouraged a lot, really. I, I, what I wanted to do when I was in my teens and a little before that, you know, was to, to build aeroplanes, you know. And uh, so I do model aeroplanes. I've got a couple in the back of the, the studio. And... Um, I went. Uh, I eventually got a um, uh, an apprenticeship, a five year apprenticeship, at in Chester, just outside where we lived. In you know, and um, 
After nine months, I had to leave. I couldn't stand factory life. It was a repetition of it. You Did know? you find it stifling the environment? Oh, it's awful. It's awful. So, and the other thing was that I had to go once a week to Chess to Wrexham to the technical college there for draw, technical drawing, engineering drawing. And it was there that I picked up the straight lines and the circles. That's how I use them now. I still use them in drawing because I rather like them, you know. What if I'm doing lettering? I'll sometimes do the circles for the O, you know. And uh, it's a major part of your style still, isn't it? Where, where did the, the splattering come from? Clumsiness. Really? Yeah, so I like think it started accident. there and I thought, oh, no, I'd rather like that. Yeah. And then when you do that, after you sign your name and you go like that, it's extraordinary the little the little shape it makes that I quite like that bit you know well I was watching the uh, the For No Good Reason documentary the other night and, oh, yeah. and watching the way you hammer that ink down like you've certainly got the oh, technique yeah. down to a fine yeah, art haven't uh, you just yeah although I have done it sometimes and bent my nib you know it's caught the, you know. <laughs> have you ever it. gotten a picture to a point of almost completion and then ruined it and ruined it have you done that I think I have done actually. I, I spilled a button, you know, bottle of water, dirty water. Right. <laughs> you know, and then I found that it was quite nice to do dirty water splats. So instead of and then eventually that the basis, yeah. And then and then work into that and do the picture. That's quite interesting because you can. So many things happen as the water dries. The dirtier it is, the more, it, you know, and if it smells as well. It's even it's, it's nature doing its wonderful patterns, you know, and that let that dry. You can't paint that; it's too wonderfully natural and coarse. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that I find is quite interesting doing that sort of thing. And then you can even use the, those atomizers and blow the ink and get a color into that as well. So. And were these all techniques that you picked up yourself and yes, just found really. for experimentation? Yeah. And, yes. Because it's a unique yeah. style of working, isn't it? it? I suppose it is. Other people have done it, though. There are quite a few. There's a couple of them who keep telling me what they do, you know. And I think, mm -hmm. oh, uh, you know, it's really, it's really like having the... Being, uh, what's the word? Stor stalked. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like that. You get that a lot? No, I no. mean, but they're, they're Americans, usually. <laughs> and uh, one guy's called Grant Goodwine. <laughs> and uh, the other one is... Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Joey Feldman. What? Joey Feldman. Joey Feldman, yeah. They're very nice, and they're very kind. Yeah, it's a nice, no, nice, <laughs> nice fella. They're all right, they're nice fellas. The first uh, time you went to America, Ralph, what was the impact that the things that you saw there on you? Did it galvanise you as an artist and did it... Frightening, because I went round New York, went all over from top to bottom, with a little Minox camera, that kept here, and a pocket full of quarters, so I could always give, you know, give us a dime, buddy, that's a tough city, get started, yeah. So you give him a dime, give him a dime, take a photo. Yeah, that's right. Well, give him a quarter, you know. I thought that was decent enough. But, you know, you give him, you give him a, anything up to a dollar and it would be gone within an hour. They'd go and they'd find this place that makes cheap hooch. Yeah, like moonshine. Them. Yeah, filthy, horrible stuff, you know. And they'd be out of it in an hour, you know. Because it'd be strong, but uh, deadly, I suppose. I mean, it's uh, sad, really, all that. Yeah, well, I mean, the culture shock must have been quite strong. Yeah, well, there was a woman, there was, there was a guy hanging on to a, to a water hydrant in the street, you know. And then some lady said, Why don't you get up and get a job? Yeah, you're just shame yourself, you know. And you go, oh, leave me alone, lady. Leave me alone. You know. Zero sympathy. Yeah. yeah. No, no sympathy. No. No, no understanding. I've got photographs of that, you know. Going on. We, I think you struck on the nerve there. Is this idea of the uh, 
corruption perhaps of the American dream, which is obviously something that yourself and your former partner in crime oh, yeah. were oh, Hunter, yeah. definitely intrigued and inspired and interested by, right? I think that was what the thing, what the, the idea was we were going to go all over America and do, we didn't never quite got to it. The reserve thing you wanted to do was to go on the Silk Road and do something on the Silk Road. And I didn't really know what it was all about at the time, you know. But he never got round to it. We went, we went to Washington together, and I've got photographs of him. We bought, he'd got, we'd been to Hawaii, and he'd bought uh, a um, Hawaiian war club, you know, and he was right. shaking it <laughs> out of Washington, you know, from a, from up at the hotel window, shouting at, at Washington, really. And because uh, he hated um, Nixon, and he had some wonderful things. I mean, it's, it's great moments of wherever they came from. These things, like like pay the ticket, pay and take the ride, which is quite an interesting one when you think that, like drugs, if you'd take, you know, and that's uh, only ever did it once, and I never wanted to do it again. You know, uh, psilocybin. Yeah. Which trip was that on? Oh, uh, we went to Rhode Island and we went to the America's Cup. What, the yacht race event? Yeah, yeah, yeah America's Cup. And I was, I was going to write something on the side of the book. What are you going to write, Ralph? You know? So, well, how about fuck the Pope? <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't say that, probably. But anyway. I, yeah, about, anything, you can say anything on this. Yeah, but That's anyway, fine. the thing is, uh, said that, <laughs> and then he suddenly said, "This is the wonderful response, repost, repost that he gave us. Are you religious, Ralph? You know, this, I mean, the last thing I would be if I said that. You know, really. <laughs> so it's a quite well, funny thing, really. What was the nature of that relationship? If I had written that, by the way, yeah, I'd have been in prison. I think I'd never, probably, better, still to never, this day, yeah, probably, but <laughs> What was the nature of that relationship that you shared? Was it purely creative and professional? We like che chalk and cheese, really. But was there a personal friendship as oh, well? Oh, yeah, was I think there? there was. I think there was interesting because... And then he used to send me lots of fax letters because he hadn't. that's all we had them before. Yeah, yeah, before yeah. the days of emails, of course. Yeah, yeah all that. And uh, there was quite... We've got quite a few of them, actually, the old letters that he sent... They're quite funny, or, or uh, this, the ugliest thing I've ever seen, get out of my house, you know, things of that kind would come through from him. And he, I think he liked to sort of pretend um, uh, disgust, you know. He pretended to be terribly upset that he'd just said something that was... Um, he did say to me once, and I feel real trapped in this life. I feel real trapped in this life, Ralph. If I didn't know, I could commit suicide at any moment. He had twenty-three fully loaded guns in his place, and he said he'd do it. And, and, and I've got a drawing somewhere of him, uh, me going, "No, you know." And is that he, how you felt when you heard the news? Yeah, it was terrible actually. But it was Joe, Joe Petro from Kentucky who did ring up and say, take your phone off the hook, Hunter's just committed suicide. And there were 24 Pitkin County sheriffs in that uh, that area, you know, Pitkin County. And they all came around and stood around his body and they all took one of his books off the shelf and all opened it at a page and read a page over his body. They were kind of upset about it, you know. And... Uh, What's his name? God, I, I'm, I'm having a problem with memory. Uh, oh, Bob God. Bob Yeah, Bob Browdis. Yeah, that's it. Sage remembers. Yeah. Bob Browdis was... The show, they were good friends, you know, because... He, well, he was he a sort of figure in the community, oh, wasn't yeah, he, by all yeah. accounts? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was uh, absolutely amazing. And he, he bought the place for, like, $10,000 or something. This owl farm. So now it's had 23 acres behind it as well. He was going to build some God knows what out the back, you know. It never got round to it. 
but uh, he wanted to have his um, his remains. I had to go with him to the, to the funeral director to discuss his funeral and the 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 the, the up, upright sort of pillar that would have his his uh, remains on the top that would be then blasted out to kingdom come you know how old was he when he hmm? went in for that meeting how old how old was he did like did he know that death well, he, was no he coming, said he, he said oh, i'd do it. he said, said he'd do it yeah right and then it was about let's see it was back in 19 1972 oh so he was yeah. still a young man yeah oh yeah yeah and uh he just knew he'd do it that way you know and um do you think he was a happy man, deep down? Uh, sometimes, I think, you know. But also rather aggressive. Because, I mean, that's why his son, Juan, wrote a book called Stories I Tell Myself. So parts of it are sort of, he tried to write how he'd like his father to be, you know. Because he was a bit, a bit on the aggressive side, I think, with him. And uh, I don't know. It just the kind of attitude he had was pretty grim, really. And uh, he tried to be a sheriff as well, you know. And the best part of that whole thing was the the campaign. You know that was quite amazing. In fact, um, what's his name came here? Daniel. Uh, Daniel Watkins. And brought a whole load of pictures from that time, and I had to write on them all and put a caption on each one of them. There were, I don't know how many um, there were, Sadie. Uh, there were, there there were got, about 50 altogether. It probably felt like more, but there were well, I think there were more, yeah. I think well, there's there. an exhibition with them at the moment in Louisville. It's yeah. A, it's a oh, nice. The Fraser History. Yeah, they look quite good, actually. I'll show you pictures after. Thank you. There's one in there, actually. Look. that and uh, what else were we saying what about William Burroughs was he another writer that you yeah well spent I see him and we did a shooting him. thing together mm. this was quite funny it said we took up a, a print I'd done of Hunter <clears throat> a print of him with the, the sheriff's badge a ro 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 Rolex watch and between the eyes and there was a three point and he had his little gun you know leather thing so right William that's just uh, right uh, I'd like it there's three places that's three targets you've got to hit so okay it was like this shaky like hell he was a bit worse for wear a bit know? dope sick was yeah. he yeah doped up <laughs> dope, yeah. doped up and he went like and he went blah, 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 blah. he shot out the six bullets just like that and I said, hmm, he missed. I said, I Every time he missed. Miss. Well, he's dead, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so he's dead, yeah. What do you think it was that attracted you to these extreme characters? I liked illustrating Alice in Wonderland, you know, through the looking glass. Um, I was interested in Sigmund Freud and that kind of disturbance of psycho psychological process you know uh the abnormality was quite an interesting subject really and i think this it was peculiar i mean i was asked by this guy jc suarez uh, who was the at the time at the time he was the art director of this magazine called um scanlands and scanlands 
is the name of an un, uh, of a little known Nottingham pig farmer, and they named the magazine Scanlons. So, you know, how bizarre! It how is brilliant, odd, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and they wanted to do two things. One was to get Nixon impeached, and the second thing was to take on the dirty kitchens of New York and try and reveal, you know, to expose them. So all those things that they became interesting for me because I went to America and I was asked. I was rung up where I was staying with a friend I met at the private eye who was inviting me back to America if you do come over, come and stay with Dan and with me and Pam, you know. Pam's my fiance, we're met, getting married and so forth. So I stayed with them for a couple of weeks before I went into New York to look for work. And uh, that was 1970. And um, well, it was just so intense. Yeah, I just had to, I just thought, knew I had to go and try my luck in America somehow, you know. It's all right doing stuff for private eye, but I was really getting a bit bored with it, you know. And How this, brilliant is it as well that, you know, I guess one of the one, like the one of the first, sorry, jobs and assignments that you get is with, with him, you know, this with man. Who, yeah, there was, how would you like to go to Kentucky? I mean, the next hell's angel who just shaved his head was what they said. So those moments in life are so rare. It's like a Lennon and McCartney kind of friendship, isn't it? Where two people are just, I guess, creatively destined to, to meet. Be, meet. Yeah, some I spit like that, you know. When he saw me, and I used to have a little a little beard, you know, just as a goatee. So he said, what the hell's that? Said, you look, you matted head geek. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Nice to yeah, meet you. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. <laughs> You're too old. Eh? Did you ever talk yeah. about the vision, or did you just each individually do your respective things and they came together and it was just sort it of just more worked. of a cerebral... just because, you know, he said... They said you were weird, but not that weird, you know, with this thing. Because at the time, back then, 1970, there were very few people with beards, of any. I mean, that was an odd time. Now, everybody seems to have a beard, you yeah. know. Except me. I don't know. You've done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but this idea of Gonzo wasn't something that you formulated. No, no, so that much was as... interesting because the guy that came up with that, we got this thing, we did this thing together, where I used lipstick. Uh, what's his name? From um, what's the makeup people? Revlon. Revlon. Yeah. Say these. She's not, got it. Re- it's yeah, not her first it? radio, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so, um, so you she, I went to stay. With those. I went to have supper with them before I went off to. Don Goddard was the art director at the time, and uh, his wife was a representative for Revlon. And um, he, uh, they invited me to supper before I went off, and I left my I left my inks and everything in the cab uh, going over to their place so that was that so she got all these colors and eyeshadows and things like that so i was able to use those which was quite an interesting way of going you know and uh i um i thought it was interesting meeting him as i thought of all the people in america to meet a guy like this you know mm-hmm it was kind of weird. And was he hard work to be around ever? Or no, was it... not really, no. no, no. It's just that he had to have... I'd been... He wouldn't get up until three in the afternoon, you know. And I'd go knocking on the door and he'd go, fuck off! <laughs> you know? And so you'd have to wait until it was time for him to get up. And I'd never been in his room when he's his breakfast has arrived and it's six bloody marys on the tray <laughs> breakfast is served sir yeah yeah absolutely pretty well like that you know okay. so very much the myth was the reality yeah you know how people have i guess mythologized over oh, they, the years about they, how much they, he... they exaggerate it you know and embellish it and things but it was 
it was sometimes felt a bit worse than that, but I may have forgotten a lot of it. He's also, I let him shoot one of my artworks too, and he had a go on it, you know. And what he liked to do with it was to have my artwork hung up like that, upright, and then he'd hang my bottles of ink um, in front of it, mm-hmm. that, and then he'd shoot it with a gun, you know. And add to it. Yeah, add to it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was he yeah. encouraging of you when you segued into writing more in the 80s? I think it probably helped, you know, because I started writing about what he was writing about and uh, or writing about what we did together, you know. And there are some... Well, I wrote... When he died, I wrote the book The Joke's Over, which is about that loss, you know. And um, it was really a loss. It was a pity. It's a, it pity he had to do that, you know, that's all. I didn't really think much of the idea, you know, of him doing that. But the bullet hole is still through the cooker hood in the kitchen at our farm. And it's just going to remain. It's where it'll be, yeah. yes, yeah. It's the sort of one result of it. Oh, very odd. Were you at the funeral where they did the firing of the cannon and the? Yes, we went to the to his uh, thing. I went with the, everybody was there that knew him. You know? Yeah. Did you know a lot of those guys as well through the years? People like Bill Murray and, and Johnny. Oh Depp yes, and... yeah, and and I was there when they did the film. With uh, what was his name? Um, uh, God, I'm having a problem. Uh, what the hell was his name? The director, art director, yeah, art director, Art Linson. Right. And he um, he got Bill Murray to play Hunter in the. Have you seen the first film? Where the Buffaloes, right? Yeah, Yeah. Buffalo, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's a lot more of a comic portrayal isn't it the, yeah it is really yeah the fear and loathing one but i love both for different but interesting different reasons i don't know what happened to art linson i'm not sure what he is now was bruce robinson someone that you had a relationship or a friendship oh yeah with? well he was keen because he came here and he came he was pissed when he first arrived because he was quite the hellraiser as well right yeah and he said uh, i said he went he staggered over there used to be a very big tree over the other side of a, a horse chestnut, huge thing it was, over the other side. And um, um, he fell down on it. He looked rubber. I, you know, uh, I, I said, so I went over to. That was his arrival, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was his arrival. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, well, how, how do you like my horse chestnut? No, how do you like my tree? He says, it's not your tree, Ralph. It's everybody's tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. So, um... Uh, I love the post that you did for that film. It was oh, yeah, that's... Uh, very in tune with the tone of that. That was very that strange, wasn't well. it? That was um, he, uh, Richard E. Grant was yeah. in that, yeah, with... And, um, Strangely as well, and, uh, he's Ralph allergic Brown. to alcohol. Ralph Brown. Yeah. He played the, the Camberwell Carrot. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Thousand Brown M&Ms. Great, that was a great <laughs> film, that, yeah. And uh, it was interesting to see it. And D.W. Uh, D. Griffiths, is it? He played the... Yeah, uh, it's not D.W., but I do know... No, the, I, is I know it the Lloyd Griffiths? Griffiths hmm? Is it Lloyd Griffiths? And Hugh, is it Hugh Griffiths? Richard Griffiths. There you go. What? R- Richard Griffiths, right? Richard Griffiths yeah. might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. The, the very chubby, charismatic yeah, that's actor. It, yeah. yeah, that's it. Mm. And, um, Have you ever cameoed in any films? Cameoed? Yeah, as in made a, a little appearance. Other than obviously the documentary about you. Have you ever uh, turned up in a film that we don't know about? <laughs> uh, forgotten, actually. Done some things. No? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what now. Tell me about your uh, your music then. Where does this love affair? Well, it was just that I begin. I was living in East Ham, and 
I'd uh, arrive, go to Alan's, uh, Alan, his name was Alan Hodgkin, and he played with Django Reinhardt in the Hot Club of France, remember? The, and um, and Stefan Rapelli was the other, he was the violinist, didn't you remember? And they used to play together in London. And then he did guitar lessons, Alan, you know, so I went to him. But he wanted to talk more about art, because I'd met him at the art classes in East Ham. So we'd do the hours long practice. And then um, uh, I'd have to write something for next week and play it, you know, something like that. So, uh, then he wanted to talk about art more than he's more interested in that. But he was such a brilliant player, you know. And my my son there, Theo, he played. He learned. Oh yeah, yeah. The, so do you play with him? Have you no, made I stuff together? Play, no, I, I wouldn't dare try. It's <laughs> <laughs> too good. I bought him his first guitar when he was fifteen. Yeah. Um, is singing something you ever no, done on good. record? He's, he's really good at that. Well, I'm all right at singing. I yeah. can play one of my songs. Yeah, I'd love to hear something. Um, and yeah, I'll do that. And we should do that first, I think. It's, um, I can't wait to hear myself. Yeah, let's do it then. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. It's not on here. No? It's, it's here. I'll bring one of these mics through so we can record it in there. It's a very elaborate form of music piracy, what I'm doing now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, wake up in your thoughts. Let's see. Let's see. I'm, oh, that's the thing. I don't want to do This is not me, but... I was going to say. I was going to say, no. <laughs> Casual. Yeah. No, this is the... Uh, I think... This is the one where it goes wrong. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You were saying earlier on. Yeah, this is perfect painting music, isn't it? What's that? It's perfect painting music. Yeah, yes it is, really. What are the William Burroughs tracks as well? Is that you and him playing together? What? Where? The William Burroughs. Is that you and him uh, playing together? We might be talking together. Not playing. I just like this. It's so funny. <laughs> it's a bomb not just being a <laughs> Thank you. 
Have you seen that famous video of the orchestra where there's a man asleep and they keep going on and on and playing and playing and he's sort of drift, drifting in and out of sleep. It's so good. It's like a famous sketch. <laughs> I think I might have seen that. It gets worse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> This is like the Bonzo Dog Doodah band of classical music, yes. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so is your music available to buy? No. No? So should you sing Song's called Weird and Twisted Nights. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> playing on it with you? A guy called Mars Williams. He's playing he plays saxophone on it. I really like it.
the band. <laughs> <laughs> you got to release this, you got to put a record out. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> what did you think of Johnny's portrayal of him? Did you think that he uh, not bad. he nailed the essence? A bit, a bit, uh, not quite the voice, you know. This, he had a certain voice sound. Um, I can tell you in a minute. <laughs> I've never started an interview in one room and moved to another before. No. I love it. It's free form. <laughs> 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 I didn't even know you were still here, Gobby. Good to see you. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> oh, yeah. How good is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's Ralph singing. Again, you know, it comes on. And I said, play like the devil just sent to the church. That's a good directional cue. Yeah. A song that was inspired by some of your nights with Hunter, was it? Was yeah, it, I think you, so, they yeah. never really happened anyway. Yeah, that's I'm right. just going to hit pause on this. Yeah, yeah put that up. That's when I see you on like that's one of my son's songs. But what was that, that one of the. Uh... So you like Johnny's performance, you just didn't think he quite got the uh, I think the, the voice the just. Was, you know, <laughs> I think about it. Oh, yeah, we got it. Excuse me, you uh, Russ Hammond. You know, yeah, there was a way of cutting his his uh, vowels like down. Down, it was good. that's very weird, but not that weird. You know that sort of way. And he didn't quite get it on that. Isn't what it was? But he had to live with him for a while. You know, a few weeks to a 
observe him. <laughs> like a wild animal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mum says she's got lunch on the table. Oh, right. There we go. Just do that. If you move it off the... Oh, there you go, you got it. This reminds me a little bit of Donovan, Season of the Witch. It's got that similar guitar line and kind of spooky quality to it. Quick question before we wrap, Ralph. Who's been your favourite president to caricature and draw and uh, because of the just sheer ridiculousness of their think, physical uh, appearances? I think it was Nixon. Yeah. Uh, although, although I think... Uh, they've all been a bit interesting. The only one that was... Carter, I like Carter too much to do much to it. Yeah, to really devilise him, yeah. Too much a nice guy. (laughs) Is he going to get in trouble if his lunch gets cold? (laughs) I said, are you going to get in trouble if you're... Are we going to get you in trouble if your lunch gets cold? Ralph Steadman, thanks for coming on the show. That was a pleasure. Thanks. There was only one road back to L.A. U.S. Interstate 15. Just a flat-out high-speed burn through Baker and Barstow and Purdue. Then onto the Hollywood Freeway, straight into frantic oblivion. Safety. Obscurity. Just another freak in the freak kingdom. We'd gone in search of the American dream. It had been a lame fuck-around. A waste of time. There was no point in looking back. Fuck no, not today, thank you kindly. My heart was filled with joy. I felt like a monster reincarnation of Horatio Alger. A man on the move, and just sick enough to be totally confident.